Good morning from Franz Josef. It is another beautiful looking morning here in New Zealand and so the plan today is to hit up the two most famous glaciers here in New Zealand which is the Franz Josef Glacier and the Fox Glacier. So we've got a couple of hikes that we're going to be taking care of today. I just hope that it continues to be beautiful outside and that the weather holds out for us. Behind us is Franz Josef Glacier and all the way up there at its peak it is actually 2,500 meters above sea level. The ice up there is 300 meters deep which is so so thick. It then runs 12 kilometers all the way down to its base where it is only 300 meters above sea level. Impressive while that is, it is worth noting that about 110 to 120 years ago, the ice actually came down all the way to this basin here. However, due to climate change, the glacier has now retreated up to its current point. So if you need any proof that climate change is real, it's right here. In 1865, when Europeans first visited Franz Josef Glacier, it has retreated significantly. And this illustration really just shows the sad state of affairs that a warming climate is having on our environment. Compared to 2010, just look at it now. There are a plethora of trails in this area, all of which offer you different views of Franz Josef Glacier. And which one you choose to do basically depends on one, your fitness level, and two, how much time you have. For reference, the three walks that we have done today started with Forest Walk, which takes you to that glacier viewpoint that we highlighted to begin with. The second one is Sentinel Walk which is quite a steep up and back. And then the final one, which is the long one, was the Douglas Walk. Sentinel Rock Walk and Douglas Walk take you through this gorgeous tropical rainforest, but don't get too concerned. Despite appearances, you're not in Jurassic Park and there's no dinosaurs who are gonna jump out and eat you. After doing a lot of walking at Franz Josef Glacier, we've come to Fox Glacier for a lot more walking. In terms of the trails that are mapped out, thankfully they have this lovely little signboard here to tell you what you can do. We're opting for this green trail here, which turns out to be the Glacier Viewpoint Trail by the south side. And it should take us about an hour and a half and is about five kilometers in total. If you can tell from the amount of footage we filmed, we have thoroughly enjoyed our two and a half kilometer walk through this rainforest on the way up to Fox Glacier. Just a few facts before we get to the glacier itself. It is 2,600 meters above sea level at its peak, which is 100 meters higher than Franz Josef. 
and it is 13 kilometers long, which is one kilometer longer than Franz Josef. We think that that was actually Fox Glacier viewpoint, but we didn't really get that same level of satisfaction as we did with Franz Josef. Apparently there's another lookout, another kilometer along, so we're gonna check that out instead in the hopes of getting a better view. And now we have officially seen Fox Glacier from as many angles as we possibly can. I think you owe me a coffee. are set to be leaving Franz Josef today but there is one thing that we are going to be doing before we leave and that is to go to a Kiwi Sanctuary which just happens to be down the road from where we are staying right now. We would obviously prefer to see Kiwi in their natural habitat in the wild but their numbers are quite low and they are also nocturnal so Trying to find one in the wild is very, very difficult. So we figure that this is probably the best way that we can go see it. It also happens to be Waitangi Day, aka New Zealand's national day. So what better way to spend it than to spend some time up close and personal with New Zealand's national bird. We've just finished our visit at West Coast Wildlife Center, and the reason that you didn't see any footage of kiwis is because filming and photography are prohibited there. They are nocturnal animals, and they're very shy. So they have two of them in a very large enclosure, and it's dark in there, so it takes a little bit of time for your eyes to adjust. But once they do, you can really see how active these birds are, I don't know what I was expecting, but they were just so cute. They're these little balls of energy. Obviously, they have no wings. And what shocked me was just how long their beaks were. And that was really what stood out in the dark is these long orange beaks. And then you could kind of see them waddling around, although I guess they're pretty efficient on their legs because that's how they move. But I just highly encourage you to go support this conservation effort because we learned that they lay about 80 eggs per year and out of those only two survive past one year old which is why it's hard for them to repopulate but the center basically hatches the eggs and raises them until they're past the most sensitive hurdle and then releases them into the wild into what they deem to be a fairly safe area and they have tags on their feet so that they can monitor their health and it's kind of amazing because we ended up learning a couple of other things like i had no idea that there were like five different species of kiwi i just thought it was all basically the same bird but it turns out there's different colorings and apparently the ones that we saw their feathers are softer definitely something good to be learned if anything, it's a little bit of a shame though, because New Zealand had such an amazing array of endemic wildlife, but because of settlers and they brought over additional mammals, and those included some predators like stoats and even domestic dogs and cats, because of those introductions, then that's why we're in the situation that we're in now. 
where we really do need to take care of kiwis and also other species like tuataras that we also saw at the sanctuary. It's a shame that we are getting to this point, but apparently New Zealand has instituted a plan to ensure that the country is predator-free again by 2050. If that does end up being successful, then that should mean that the ecosystem here in New Zealand ends up writing itself again, and we get to enjoy seeing more of these amazing animals in their natural habitat as intended. Definitely a nice way to round off our time here in Franz Josef. We have a very long and probably not that eventful drive coming up. So we will pick this up when we get to our next destination. So until next time, take care. And keep smiling. <laughs>